Hi, and welcome to this section of Space Claims Basic Training. Today we'll be talking about sketching. Now, under the Sketch section of the Design tab, there are 14 different uh, sketch buttons to create geometry. And then there are eight different buttons in order to edit geometry. And we're going to be talking about most of these uh, in a little bit of detail. Now, to start off with a sketch, I gen generally like to look at my sketch in a plan view. That means a view parallel to the sketch plane where I'm on. Let's start off by creating a rectangle. When I click the rectangle button, I'm free to select anywhere in the screen I want, and you'll notice that I'm snapping to each of these grid points. That's because if we look on the left-hand side under my sketch options, I have snap to grid selected. I can take that off at any time if I want. So we'll start off by clicking on the center of the grid, and you see two different dimensions showing up on the screen. If I hit the tab key once, I can go to the next dimension and change that, or I can hit it again to go back, and I can go back and forth as much as I need to. Now, 20 millimeters and 10 millimeters, those happen to be the dimensions that I want, so I'm going to click once to lock in the location of that rectangle. Well, let's put another rectangle in. I'm going to start by selecting on the bottom of the existing one, the bottom right, and dragging my mouse. And this time I know I want the rectangle to go at the center of the existing one, I know that's 10 millimeters, so I can drag down, and I'm going to type in, or I'm going to hit tab once to type in a new value for the height of it, and I'll hit 15, and I'm going to hit enter to lock that in place. Now let's move on to some other sketch elements. Let's create a circle. Now I know I want the circle somewhere on the left hand side, and I actually want it to be a precise distance from this corner. So I need to create or use some type of a dimension to correctly locate it. Easiest way to do this is when you have the mouse over the point of origination from where it's dimensioned, hit the shift key once. And this will start a coordinate dimension system so that I can locate where the circle is going to go. Now it's in Cartesian dimensions. If I wanted polar dimensions, I can go to the left hand side and click that and now I have an, an an overall length and an angle. Let's go back to Cartesian dimensions because I want to type in 15 millimeters and then tab to go to the height and I'm going to type in 10 millimeters and hit enter. Now my mouse is at the precise location of the center of the circle and I can just move it. I'll type in 10 millimeters and I'll hit enter to lock in the location of that circle. Let's put a second one in place right on the center of the existing one. I'll click on the center, type in 5 millimeters, and hit enter to lock that in. Now I need a series of lines that will connect the rectangles to the circles. So let's go to the line tool and look at some of the variations of that. Now I'll click on the point of a rectangle to start my line, and I want the line to be tangent to the circle. Notice as I move the line over the circle, I do get two indicators telling me that I do have tangency. So I can click there to end that line. Now what if I want to start my line from, from somewhere on the circle to another point, and I want tangency to occur? Well, I can click on a tangent line button, and now I can start anywhere on the circle and drag the line, and I still have tangency no matter where I go. And let's just move this, uh, let's just call the endpoint of the line uh, right where those two rectangles intersect. And now I've got a couple of lines in place. The next tool we'll look at is the polygon button. And the way to initiate this would be to first click where the center of the polygon is going to be. And now I have three different dimensions to control. The first will be from the center to one of the flats. I can hit tab to go to the next one. 90 degrees will control the orientation, the angle controls the orientation of this, and I hit tab again to control the number of sides. Let's type in 8, and I'll hit tab. Now, uh, once I'm satisfied with the size of it, I can click to lock that in place. Now, if at any time I want to change the size or location of these elements, I can click on the select button to exit out of some of these, or exit out of the particular sketch command I'm in, and by hovering over an element and clicking and dragging it, I can change its size. Notice that there is some associativity with the octagon. 
when I click on when I drag on one edge the rest of them follow if I don't want that to happen I can right click on the octagon and say explode and now each of these are going to behave independently now I'm in the middle of this command where I'm in the middle of this uh, moving of an element and I don't want it to happen so I'm going to hit escape before I stop dragging now I can let go of my mouse uh, and I've properly exited out of that command without making any changes. Let's talk about some of the uh, arc creation tools. I'm going to create a tangent arc. Now, the first point to click on is where I want tangency to originate. Um, I need to click on the point of a line. Right now I have that horizontal line and its point selected. So the tangency will originate from there. And then I can click on the appropriate second point I want. Another type of arc would be a three-point arc, and it consists of grabbing the starting point, ending point, and then designating the total length of the arc. Now let's talk about some of the editing tools, some of the eight editing tools on the right side. The first will be to create a rounded corner. Very simple tool to use uh, just by grabbing the first line, and then hovering over the second you can see a preview of what the, the round is going to look like. I can type in a value or I can just click to end that. The second one we'll look at is called the trim tool. Anytime there's an intersection of lines uh, the trim tool will treat each segment of the line individually so that when I click on it it highlights or if I hover over it it highlights in green and I can click to uh, get rid of that section. Now I can do the same thing for the octagon. I took away that associativity so each of these behave independently. I can click on each one of them uh, to get rid of each section of it. And I can do the same thing over here on the right hand side where this small arc is. And the last tool we'll look at uh, for editing sketch entities is the bend tool. And this will take any line and convert it into an arc. Just by clicking and dragging on it the endpoints remain the same, uh, but it turns this into an arc. And I can designate the radius or the total arc angle. So those are just a few of the tools um, in the sketch section, namely tools for creating and editing geometry. I hope you have found this useful. Uh, from this point on, you could use some of the 3D creation tools, like Pull, uh, to quickly create geometry from the sketch regions. Thank you very much for watching.